His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Sofia Palace the Russian Ambassador to the Kingdom, Alexei Skosirev, accompanied by the Deputy of the Russian Congress Fund of the Presidential Administration, Grigory Valikik, and from the Falcon Breeding Centre in Kamchatka, from Kofi Vladimir, to greet His Majesty on the occasion of the visit to the country. The delegation presented His Majesty a gift from the Russian President Vladimir Putin, which was one of the best rare Siberian falcons, in appreciation of His Majesty and the friendly relations between His Majesty and the Russian President. His Majesty also received another gift from the Russian Falcon Centre, which was a rare falcon. His Majesty welcomed the Ambassador and the accompanying delegation. He conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of the Russian President and his wishes of lasting good health and happiness to His Majesty the King and further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Majesty also conveyed his greetings to the Russian President and wishes a further progress and prosperity to Russia. His Majesty expressed appreciation to the Russian President for the gift and praised his efforts in enhancing the bilateral historic relations. His Majesty affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to protect endangered species and the cultural heritage it possesses related to the sport of falconry and the Supreme Council for Environment supports the signing of the Framework Declaration of Intent regarding the protection of rare and endangered falcons. His Majesty praised the depth of bilateral relations in all fields thanks to the joint keenness of both leaders to achieve further progress and prosperity to both countries and their peoples. The delegation expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and generous hospitality and praised His Majesty's keenness to further enhance the bilateral cooperation. His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned yesterday to Bahrain following visits to the United Kingdom and Italy. During the visit to the United Kingdom, His Majesty discussed the Bahraini-UK partnership with His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the means to further enhance and develop them in various domains. His Majesty also met the British government officials and held talks about regional and international developments particularly the Middle East and Israeli military escalation in Gaza. His Majesty emphasised the urgent need to cease military escalation, prioritise civilian protection, preserve lives and open humanitarian corridors for medical and relief aid delivery. His Majesty also visited Italy, where he met with His Holiness Pope Francis, the Pope of the Vatican. The meeting reviewed the close bilateral relations between Bahrain and the Vatican highlighting efforts in promoting values of tolerance, coexistence, human fraternity, dialogue and cooperation for the good of all humanity. During his visit, His Majesty also held talks with the Italian President, Sergio Mattarella, and the Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni. The meeting reviewed the historical bilateral relations and the latest regional and global developments, including the ongoing escalation in the Gaza Strip. The two parties stressed the importance of increasing efforts to contain the situation, prevent it from worsening, protect civilians and open safe corridors for humanitarian and delivery to the Gaza Strip.
Bahraini Italian relations are witnessing increasing momentum based on mutual keenness to consolidate cooperation, partnership, and close friendship between the two friendly countries. More in this report. A qualitative historical shift was gained by Bahraini Italian relations following the official visit of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa to Rome in the year 2008. This visit witnessed the signing of many agreements and MOUs, which contributed to pushing and strengthening relations between the two countries to the highest levels. The relations between the two friendly countries reached their brightest levels with the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa to Rome in February 2020 and his opening of the headquarters of the Bahraini Embassy. Friendly ties were rooted and continued through mutual official visits between officials of both countries, which contributed to strengthening political dialogue, consultation and cooperation on many issues. Trade exchange between Bahrain and Italy is witnessing a continuous increase, with the value of mutual trade between the two countries exceeding 600 million euros, with Italy occupying first place among European suppliers to the kingdom, in addition to the high volume of mutual investment between them in all fields. Close and extended relations between the two friendly countries are evident through cooperation that covers most fields and achieves the common and ambitious strategic visions between them. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the champions of the Hangzhou ASEAN Games 2022 and the administrative delegation of the Olympic Committee. In the presence of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and a number of officials, heads and representatives of participating sports federations, sponsors and supporters. His Highness affirmed that the sporting achievements made by the Kingdom's champions in the recently concluded 19th ASEAN Games in the Chinese city of Hangzhou 2022 reflects the high spirit enjoyed by the athletes of the Kingdom and the keenness to represent the Kingdom and raising the nation's flag. His Highness conveyed to the champions who won the 20 coloured medals, including 12 gold, 3 silver and 5 bronze medals, the greetings and congratulations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He praised the achievements made by Team Bahrain teams in the ASEAN Games to occupy the best position in its history by coming in ninth place in Asia and first in the Arab world, with the largest number of gold medals since Bahrain's first participation in the ASEAN Games in 1974 and achieving seven new records for the ASEAN Games. His Highness added that His Majesty the King was keen to follow the national teams in the tournament despite the time difference. He praised the achievements in all categories, which reflect the growing development of Bahraini sports. He also praised the sacrifices and generosity of the technical and administrative teams, who are an essential partner in making this achievement. His Highness affirmed that the people of Bahrain, with the support of His Majesty King, always prove their brilliance and excellence, so that Bahraini sports live a golden age. His Highness noted the support and follow-up from His Highness Sheikh Khalid, the presence of the head of the delegation, Vice President of the Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, the executive body led by the Secretary General of Faraz Mustafa Al Khahiji, and the important role of the administrative and media mission, wishing the national teams continued success. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed his pride in the historic achievement made by the Kingdom in the ASEAN Games, which is the second largest multi sport event in the world. He praised the support and follow up from His Highness Sheikh Nasser which represents a source of pride for all athletes. His Highness dedicated the achievement to the leadership, which is sparing no effort to support the sports movement. He appreciated the efforts made by the administrative and media mission and the sports federations, stressing that what was achieved is the result of joint cooperation between all parties of the Olympic movement. His Highness wished Bahrain more progress and prosperity.
the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the International School Sports Federation, the ISF, President Laurent Petrenka. The GSA a Deputy Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Asker, the BOC Secretary General Faris Mustafa Al Kuhiji, and the Chairman of the Executive Committee of ISF, Jim Nasiad, Bahrain 2024, Eshak Abdullah Eshak, were present. His Highness Sheikh Khalid welcomed the visit of Lord Petrenka's visit to the Kingdom, praising the ongoing close cooperation between Bahrain sports entities and the ISF affirming the Kingdom's readiness to host ISF at Gymnasiad at Bahrain at 2024 under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The two sides discussed the ongoing preparations to hold the global school sports event in the Kingdom. Lord Petrenka commended the Kingdom's efforts to ensure the success of ISF Gymnasiad Bahrain at 2024, wishing Bahrain further progress and prosperity. Under the auspices of the BDF Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Royal Command Staff, the National Defence College, hosted a lecture on the military career of Prophet Muhammad's companion Khalid bin Al Walid, presented by the Political Science Professor at Austin Community College, Texas, US, Dr. Rai Casagrande. In the presence of the Minister of Defence Affairs, General Abdullah al Nuwaymi, and the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Thir bin Saga al Nuwaymi. The BDF Chief praised the valuable lecture delivered by Dr. Roy Casagrande, noting that it included details about the military genius showcased by companion and military commander Khalid bin al Walid in the Islamic battles and conquests that he led and in which he participated. The lecture shed light on the combat tactics and military command strategies of Khalid bin al Walid, as well as the impact of his military genius on strategic military thought, as his military plans and methods have been taught throughout history. The Commander in Chief also hailed Dr. Roy Casagrande's scientific and academic career, as well as his contributions to enriching historical studies, praising his studies in politics, economy, psychology, and philosophy. He wished him further success. A number of senior BDF officers, editors-in-chief of local newspapers, a number of military attaché at brotherly countries also attended. The Representatives Council held its weekly meeting yesterday, headed by Speaker Ahmed Amusalem. The Council expressed solidarity with the Palestinian people and donated 50,000 dinars to the Bahraini National Campaign for Gaza Relief, calling at the same time for an urgent halt to the war and the necessity of opening urgent humanitarian corridors to bring aid into the Gaza Strip. The Council then approved a draft law regarding the organisation of the press, printing and publishing. The Council also approved a report regarding the performance of the LMRA. The Council then approved a number of proposals with a desire to urgently submit them to the government. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif Al Ziani, attended the GCC Ministerial Council meeting to discuss the Gaza Strip situation called for by Oman. The meeting was chaired by Oman's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abada bin Hamid bin Hamoud al Basaidi. The GCC Secretary General, Jazm al Badawi, was present. The Ministerial Council expressed gratitude to the Sultan of Man, His Majesty Haytham bin Tariq al Said, for receiving GCC Foreign Affairs Ministers and the GCC Secretary General, where His Majesty spoke on his vision for security, stability, and prosperity. The Ministerial Council discussed the escalating violence and illegal bombardment of the Gaza Strip, resulting in thousands of civilian deaths and injuries. They also discussed Israel's intentions to invade and displace the civilian population, highlighting the pressing and dangerous challenges facing the region. The Ministerial Council called for an immediate ceasefire and end of Israeli military operations in Gaza, ensuring humanitarian aid, resuming electricity and water lines and allowing entry of fuel, food and medicine for Gaza residents. The Ministerial Council also affirmed its support for the Palestinian people's steadfastness on their land and cautioned against any attempts to displace them. The Council urged all conflict parties to protect civilians, avoid targeting them and comply with international and humanitarian laws. 
It called for the release of hostages and innocent detainees and international protection for the Palestinian people. The Ministerial Council announced a launching an urgent humanitarian relief operation for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, providing 100 million US dollars in aid and emphasising the urgent delivery of this aid, affirming its intention to assist the Palestinian people. The Council affirmed its support for the initiative of Saudi Arabia, the European Union and the Arab League to revive the Middle East peace process in collaboration with Egypt and Jordan. The Ministerial Council affirmed its commitment to its firm stance on ending the illegal Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories. It also reiterated the right of self-determination for the Palestinian people and establishing an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the international law, the Arab Peace Initiative and relevant resolutions of Security Council and United Nations General Assembly. It stressed on the responsibility of the international community to address the Palestinian cause without double standards. The Council urged the UN Security Council to implement its former resolutions on the Arab-Israeli conflict and to adopt a resolution ensuring Israel's compliance with international law and the UN Charter and rejecting any Israeli plans to invade Gaza or the Palestinian territories or displacing the Palestinians. The Sultan of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Haitham bin Tariq, received the GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs in the presence of the Council Secretary General. During the meeting, the latest developments on the Palestinian territories were reviewed. His Majesty the Sultan noted the necessity for intensifying regional and international efforts to de-escalate, stop violence and provide protection and urgent humanitarian aid for civilians. The meeting also discussed the march of joint Gulf work, cooperation and coordination between its countries and the means to bolster it for the interest of GCC countries. The Foreign Affairs Ministers conveyed the greetings and good wishes of their country's leaders to His Majesty the Sultan. For his part, His Majesty Sultan Haytham asked the Ministers to convey his greetings to their country's leaders, wishing them further growth and prosperity. An inauguration ceremony was held for the international conference organised by the Ombudsman General Secretariat on the occasion of the 10th anniversary under the title The Effectiveness of the Ombudsman within the Institutional Work and the Role in Promoting Respect for Human Rights. In the presence of a number of ministers, heads of national government agencies and senior figures from outside Bahrain, representing heads of offices and unions of ombudsmen around the world, with high-level representation from the Gulf and the Arab world. During the ceremony, the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Waqf, Nafal Ma'ada, delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the establishment of the Ombudsman General Secretariat came within the system of institutional work which is keen on respecting human rights and consolidating justice and the rule of law, which was confirmed through a series of executive measures that raised Bahrain's status among leading countries in respecting the values and principles of human rights and made it a pioneer in the Arab and regional environment within the framework of the reform project of His Majesty the King, with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Ombudsman General Secretariat said that the conference sheds light on Bahrain's leadership in the work of Ombudsman institutions, as the Secretariat is its first of its kind, with specific specialisation in the region. The conference also aimed to transfer the Bahraini experience to the international scope by reviewing this role of the Secretariat in promoting responsible professional practices and demonstrating the essential role of regulatory and supervisory bodies and independent national mechanisms in raising the level of government performance and improving the quality of services in several sectors. Ten years after the establishment of a qualitative human rights experience in the Kingdom of Bahrain, these international delegations came to join the Kingdom in celebrating the success and excellence of the General Secretariat of Grievances and the presence of a number of senior officials from the legal, justice and security sectors in the Kingdom who emphasized the role of the Secretariat in promoting and developing human rights work on various levels. We are very pleased that we are celebrating our 10th anniversary since the establishment of the Independent Ombudsman Office, which was established in 2013. Uh, and it, has a it played a very big role in enhancing the human rights uh, uh, principles here in Bahrain. First and foremost, I want to congratulate 
the ombudsman's office, and in particular, Ms. Akada, who uh, is the ombudsman of Bahrain. I want to commend her predecessor, His Excellency uh, Mr. Nawaf, who is now the minister. This is an incredibly important event. Uh, I think it speaks to uh, how progressive and reform-minded Bahrain is by even establishing the ombudsman's office. And then on top of it, the office is very, very effective. It has full ability to do its job, the full support of His Majesty the King, the government of Bahrain, and of course the Minister of Interior. Um, and from the United States point of view, uh, the fact that the ombudsman's office that exists and its effectiveness shows that Bahrain is a leader in this field. Uh, we strongly support what uh, the government is doing to improve the human rights situation and ensure that all Bahrainis can benefit from the blessings of this beautiful country. Kingdom of Bahrain has taken great leadership in the creation of the Office of the Ombudsman and I do think the Office of the Ombudsman is a really fundamental part of the promotion of uh, human rights, both in the Kingdom of Bahrain, but of course the Ombudsman exists around the world as a promoter of human rights. So at a time in the world, uh, there will always be a need for an Ombudsman. A large and clear imprint and impact left by the General Secretariat of Grievances in its sincere and professional work in preserving the institutional work system that is keen to respect human rights and consolidate the values of justice and the rule of law in cooperation and partnership with various local and international institutions working in this field. This conference is a platform for those who are interested um, in human rights from around the world to come together to discuss and exchange um, ideas about uh, the Ombudsman offices and their role in promoting human rights and accountability. Uh, in this conference we will be dealing or so many uh, professors, so many Ombudsmen are gathering here and so many voices will be having a chance to hear them actually. Uh, and in this conference, the, the human rights and uh, criminal justice system will be, uh, you know, will be discussed discuss here by the, so many voices and by so many chairpersons and ombudsmen here. And it is the uh, tenth anniversary of the ombudsmanship here in uh, Bahrain. The success and distinction of the General Secretariat of Grievances in performing its work over the past years came to demonstrate Bahrain's pioneering steps in developing and strengthening the judicial and legal sector in line with the aspirations of His Majesty the King so that Bahrain remains an icon of justice, development and continued prosperity. The chairman of the board of directors of Gulf Air Holding Group, Azed Al Ziani, received the certificate of Bahrain International Airport's hosting of the 29th edition of the Global Route Development Forum, Roots World. During the official announcement ceremony at the 28th edition of Roots World, in which the Gulf Air participated, in the presence of nearly 3,000 participants from all over the world. On the occasion, Al Ziani expressed pleasure that Bahrain was chosen to host this global event congratulating Team Bahrain for their efforts that contributed to hosting this important global event that brings together leaders of the air transport development community. He noted that the event is a platform to discuss development plans that support the growth of the aviation sector and showcase the infrastructure Bahrain possesses. For his part, the CEO of Bahrain Airport Company, Mohamed al Fanfala, stressed that Roots World is a distinguished opportunity to highlight the advanced capabilities of the new passenger terminal and support the company's strategic goal of attracting more than 14 million visitors annually, expressing confidence that hosting this global event gives a closer look at the reality of Bahrain as a vital market and an attractive destination. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Committee to Support Palestinians in Gaza held its first meeting, chaired by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation Secretary General and President of the committee, Dr Mustafa Al Sayed. Dr Al Sayed expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, the Honorary President of the RHF, for his continuous humanitarian initiatives in supporting Palestinians and providing relief for the afflicted, which stem from fraternal and humanitarian ties between the people of the world. 
He hailed the support the RHF receives from the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also commended the support that the campaign receives from His Highness Sheikh Nasser, affirming the member's pride in contributing to serving Palestinians, wishing the committee success in carrying out its duty, which reflects Bahrain's honourable stances towards the Palestinian people. Dr Al Sayed expressed satisfaction with the preparatory procedures carried out by the members, expressing appreciation for the cooperation with the RHF. The members also discussed the joint working mechanism to urge all to contribute, supporting and providing aid. The national campaign will be launched within the day of solidarity with the people in Gaza. We are with you in a special programme that will be aired on Friday on Bahrain TV at 5pm with the participation of a number of national figures, including scholars, thinkers and businessmen. The meeting also discussed the optimal use of contributions that will be collected by sending an urgent shipment of relief and medical aid. Orly Terranova gave Bahrain Raid Extreme a dramatic final stage victory in the Rally du Maroc today after a tense battle with Saudi Arabia's Yazid Arashi in the final round of the World Rally Raid Championship. Partnered by fellow Argentine Bernardo Grug in the BRX Pro Drive Hunter, Terranova produced the perfect finish to the event as he won the 152 km final stage from Arashi, who took his overall rally honours in his Toyota. The stage win completed a superb recovery from Terra Nova, who had dropped from outright contention because of a second league suspension problem, but bounced back with a second place finish on the previous stage. Sebastian Loeb also produced a final leg fight back in his BRX Pro Drive Hunter, recording the fourth fast of time on the day, alongside Fabien Lacroix, following yesterday's agonising stage exit while just 29 seconds away from the rally lead. Qatar's Anasa Alataya also came to a standstill in the dunes for a second day, but he later restarted, finished eighth overall in his Toyota, and retained his driver's title in the World Rally Raid Championship, following victories in three previous rounds. Nani Roma pulling off one of the big moves of the day to grab third place overall. It's frustrating because, uh, especially, uh, we had a very good stage until there. Uh, we. We catch Nasser quite early in the stage, uh, then we overtook him and then Matthias was in front. He made a little mistake in the navigation, we were able to, to pass in the front and then we were first car. Just doing our job and uh, we had a good rhythm, no puncture, nothing, everything was going well and suddenly it stopped. So for sure it's a bit frustrating because after that we know that we were just 500 meters from the neutralization over there. We would know that Nasser is far behind and we are leading the rally, so yeah, but we didn't know at this point and so that's how it is.